there's always a how to everything in life. There's a how to cook, there's a how to drive, there's a how to even dress, there's a how to talk. Now the know-how is called wisdom. If you don't know how things are done, you're going to be that a misnomic individual causing chaotic issues, disorder, distraction in many places. Now the Bible says that for lack of knowledge, my people perish. Now when it comes to the school of marriage, do you get to know that one of the greatest mistakes people do is that many people actually fall in love with a personality, but you are going to be living with a character. Now, women, this teaching is for you. I want to teach and mention to you the five most important basic questions every lady must answer before you accept a man to marry you. If you fail to answer this question properly, you're going to have either a failed marriage or a difficult marriage. Now, these questions are critical. Asking the right questions actually give you the right answers. So I intend to bring these five basic, most important questions every female must ask and answer before you finally decide to marry a man because marriage is actually a choice. You decide to get married or you decide not to. Should in case you make a decision that you want to get married, you would have to answer these all important five questions. Now, the first question you have to answer as a female before you accept a man's final proposal leading into marriage is this. What does he want from me? What does the man want from you? You see, the female species is a very deep and versatile being God created. Now, it's so dynamic and so deep-centered individual because they have this dwindling, swindling, and then dribbling variational personality. What I mean is that in every female are seven personalities because in the female is a sister. It's a girl, it's a lady, it's a mother, it's a wife, and above all, it's a woman. Now, if a male comes to you as sister, you should know what he's looking for. Unfortunately, a lot of sisters, eh, a guy comes around you and then he shows some kind of interest in you. You may assume that he really wants you as a wife and as a mother for his kids, but apparently he's just looking for a lady he can go to party with, jump with, smoke with, drink with, do most of these misnomic silly stuff with. So he's not even looking for a wife or a mother for his kids. He's just looking for a lady to go out with. Do you care to know if a man comes around you as a sister and he is not seeing you as his wife nor mother of his children and you all you are seeing is a husband? Do you care to know what is going to happen to you? He doesn't want you as a wife nor a mother for a kid. So you can be in that relationship for seven years. Even seven years, you should have completed medical school. Why are you in a relationship for seven years and you don't even know where it's leading and where you're heading towards? It's because it has not been well defined. You should find out this question, what does it want from me? At a particular age, you are 22 and you are still doing boyfriend, girlfriend. 25, you are still doing boyfriend, girlfriend. No, at a particular age as a female, because your, your biological clock, physiological clock is ticking. If marriage is not the goal, relationship should not start because you are not in for play. So you should be able to know what does it want from me. It's a question I tell sisters, I tell my children in the ministry, I tell daughters that, hey, if he comes around you, know this. What is he looking for? How and why do I say that? God took something out of the male and created the woman. So there's always a missing part from the man which we are looking for. So every man is incomplete without a woman. Men can debate that, but no male is actually complete without a woman. So there's something we are looking for. They're either looking for a lady, a sister, a mother, a wife, because that is a female species. All these areas, this personality are inside you as a sister. So sister, you are a sister, or you are a girl, or you are a mother, or you are a wife, or you are, you are all this in one. That is why the girl in the female must be disciplined. The lady in the, in, the, in the female must be well-mannered and well-cultured. The mother in the female must be well-compassionate. The wife in the female must be very responsible. I could give you all this a whole kind of a teaching set up. But the first question every female must answer before you finally accept a man is this. What does he want from you? The second question you have to answer is this question. Can I submit to him? Can I? See, sisters, 
All this issue, oh, oh, I will not submit, I will not submit. No. no. No one is forcing you into submission. You choose. A man comes to you, will you marry me? You make the choice. You see, you must choose your prison mate. You must choose who you want to submit to. God gave you the leverage. God gave you the opportunity to decide who you want to submit to. So if you, a man comes to you, you must ask this question intuitively, intrinsically within your being. Can I submit to this man? Is he a man I can submit to? Now, submission does not connote bullying. Submission does not connote imprisonment. Submission does not suggest or point out to being uh, in prison or cage. No, you are getting it all wrong. The word submission is to a uh, sub and mission, which means that the man has a mission. You see, in school, we, they taught us the universal set and then the subset. A subset is a part of the universal set. The man has the mission. The mission is the general umbrella. Do you get to know that the purpose for marriage is the fulfillment of purpose? You are coming together to fulfill a particular assignment, a particular mandate, a particular work called a mission. So the man has the mission. So sister, when you come to the man, you should see this man. Does this man has a mission? Can I feature in his mission? Can I operate within his mission? If you can feature, if you cannot operate within the man's mission, you, are, you can submit. Do you know that it's difficult for a woman to submit to a man who doesn't even have a mission statement at all, who doesn't even know where he's going? Because you see, males who may even listen to this video, you should understand that at every given time of your life, you are either going on a mission, you are running with a vision, or you are burning with a passion. Women will yield to men who has mission, who have passions, and who has vision. So it is easy for a woman to submit to a man with a vision, a mission. So here's the key. If you don't know the man's mission, you cannot even understand even to begin with. Can I submit to this man? So submission it has to do with the mission of the man operationalized within the man's work frame because you are coming together not to self-angradize yourself, not for self-satisfaction, but the fulfillment of a unique mandate and assignment God gave the man. The third question I feel that every sister has to answer vividly if you want to accept a man for marriage proposal is this question, can he lead me? You see, the male, when the Bible says that word, the man being the head. Headship in marriage is not to dominate the woman, no. Headship in marriage is not to bully the woman, no. Headship in marriage is not for superiority mentality that the man is supposedly superior to the man. No, males are not superior. The concept of headship has to do with leadership. There must be a leader. So if you can sub, you cannot follow the leadership of this man. If this man can lead you, you can't marry him. If he can lead you, you can't follow him. Headship in marriage is not for the man to feel superior, to feel more important. No, God is the God of order. And where there is no leadership, there's no order. So where there's leadership, there'll be order, there'll be tranquility, there'll be productivity, there'll be efficiency. So a woman who says that I cannot follow the man's leadership, then the man can marry you because the man is the head. And being the head means that he assumes leadership. Do you get to know on your head is your eyes? On your head is your ears? On your head is your nose? On your head is your mouth? Now we have five senses. Do you get to know that four of the five senses are on the head? So the male species is supposed to assume a leadership role. To lead, he must see ahead, he must hear further, he must smell further, and must be able to talk better. You understand that one? So if a female follows a man who can lead her, and here's the deal. The reason why a lot of you are dating men or marrying men who are insecure is because most of these men don't know how to lead. They have either been intimidated or they are feeling some way or the woman is feeling... Because you see, women, you are very powerful. You are like electric current. You are too powerful that God has to bring you under control. God has to put your power into a 
current, you know, a tube. That's how, because if we allow you women, you explode. You are too powerful. You see, the man is not stronger. Men are stronger container, weaker content. The woman, when the Bible says that we should deal with the woman according to a weaker vessel, the word vessel suggests fragile nature. You know, there are stuff when you buy, when they package, you say, well, handle with care. Content is fragile. It means that the woman is just like air. You see the egg, the shield is very soft, so it can easily break. So the woman is a stronger content, weaker vessel. The man is of a weaker content, a stronger container. So men, all this, their physical strength, they are, oh, oh, oh. men are not strong. So I always advise the men that, hey, you want to live long, don't fight with men. They have the energy to fight. They have the energy to quarrel. They have the energy for all this stuff. You will die early. You, they will be here and you will go. Never fight a woman. Never struggle with a woman. And never contend with a woman when you want to live long, even as a man. So here's the deal. Leadership in marriage is not for dominion. It's for leadership. It's for order. It's for, for serenity, productivity, efficiency. Where there's good leadership, there will be good influence. There will be success. So woman, a man who can lead you, you can marry. The fourth question you must ask and you must answer is this question. Does his vision inspire me? Does his vision inspire you? One of the, my requirements I'll require from any man who wants to marry any of my children or my daughter is this. He must submit to you his vision statement. You see, because without a vision, I, I wrote that book or that teaching. You can get it and read or, or, or listen to the 12 types of men achieving women should not marry. I spoke about the visionless, the volteric man. The volteric man is the man without a vision. He doesn't even know where he's going. If a man does not know where he's going, who will follow him? A man who doesn't even know what his future looks like. A man who doesn't even know what he's living for. A man who doesn't even know what he's believing for. He's aimless. He's... You see, once a man is visionless, he'll be aimless, he'll be lawless, he'll be careless, he'll be reckless. And a woman can follow such a man. So young lady, my sister, you have to find out, does the vision of the man inspire you? Why do I say this? The female is the helper. God said, I'll make the, uh, the man a help meet. You are the one to help the man achieve vision, actualize purpose, bring to fruition his assignment. And that is your role. You are a helper. Women, female, God gave you all it takes to help a man. Unfortunately, most of you are helping the wrong man, the wrong ones. You are giving your money to the wrong man. You give your energy to the wrong one. You're giving your strength to the wrong one. Women are supposed to help men. Unfortunately, in this 21st century, look as if women are rarely for men to help them. No, that's not the concept. You are a helper. Guess what? Every helper is stronger than the one they are going to help. If you are praying for a destiny helper, should you be richer than your destiny helper? Should you be more exposed than your destiny helper? No, the woman, you are the helper. You must find a man whose vision inspires you, whose vision is authentic, whose vision is genuine. Then you can lend your help, your full support. But here's the deal. A vision that does not inspire will not attract help. Even me as a man or all of us, anywhere, when you are even talking about your vision to work, to do stuff, and you are looking for helpers to come on board, if your vision is not inspiring, who will even give you financial help or physical help or resources? The vision of the man must be so inspiring, must be so intriguing, must be so captivating, that can trigger the power of the woman to come on board to help. So sister, if the man's vision doesn't inspire you, you can't marry him. When you do, you're going to have a boring man, a boring home, a boring life. And guess what? Boredom kills early because boredom allows inspiration to die. Thereby, you may aspire too early. But when a man's vision inspires you, you want to live more. You want you live every day knowing what to do and where to go. And that's the better way to live your life. Now, the final question you must ask and you must answer is this. Can I be his peace? Men only stay in places of peace. You know the old adage that the way to a man's heart is through his stomach. I believe that that is a cake. That is esoteric. That's antediluvian. That is old school. That thing does no longer work. The way to a man's heart is no longer his stomach. Can I shock you? The way to a man's heart is to massage the man's ego. 
You make the man feel important. You give the man so much peace. There's this concept where Christian ladies don't like Delilah in the Bible. But guess what? There's something most Christian ladies or wives have to go and learn from Delilah. Delilah was the kind of woman that gave something peace. We read that something will go to war, will go and fight her. After all the fight, the struggle, the workload, the pressure, the stress, the strenuous, herculean activities of something, he gets back to a house where Delilah is, and something put his head on the laps of Delilah. My sister, can your man go to war, go to fight, go to work with the struggle, with the stress, with the hazard? Come back to the house and put his head on your lives. Unfortunately, most of our sisters create the home like a war zone, like a military zone. Most men don't have peace. People believe that the number one need of a man is respect. No, the number one need of every male is peace. The man goes where there is peace. The man stays where there is peace. The man inhabits the peaceful environment. So my sister, if you are married to even a man and you are not giving him peace, guess what is going to happen to you? You may do all the dirty work, mop the house, wash the dishes, wash his clothes, iron everything. The dress you iron, the dress you may even wash and iron, he will wear it and walk out of the house and go and stay with a girl or somebody else who gives him peace. Respect he gets from his work, his colleague, workers, subordinate. Oh yes sir, good morning sir. They will give you all the respect. What kills most men is not lack of respect, it's lack of peace. Let me repeat myself. What kills most men early is not lack of respect, it is lack of peace. The men are stressed, the men are dying, the men are fatigued, the men are depressed, the men are suppressed by the nagging nature of a wife, of a woman, or of a lady, of a sister. So sister, you have to answer this question. If you know you can't give this man peace, you don't have to marry him. You don't have to accept his proposal because if you accept a man to marry him and be his wife and you don't give him peace, you become a nagging person. Guess what? You're going to send him out of the house. He won't live in your house. The body will be with you, but his soul and his heart will be far away. You have these choices to make. Five basic questions you have to answer as a lady before you finally accept a man to marry him to be his wife. Guess what? If you answer this question properly, you receive a past man. If you answer all the five correctly, you receive excellence. And once you have re- distinction in your answering, your marriage will be okay. These things are not subjective. They are just objective. I'm not imposing on anybody. If you feel you agree with it, why not? This can bless you. My name is Apostle Tiflos. Jeffries, your certified life coach, certified relationship coach, certified emotion, emotional intelligence hygienist. Above all, I'm the lead pastor of the ever-flourishing City Chapel International. God bless you.